All right, so again, for this class, we're not going to deal with uh, chapters one and two, which, uh, again, let me just get to the beginning of the book here. Again, chapter one is uh, chapter one is the basics of knife fighting. Uh, chapter two is knife fighting myths, which uh, is, if, you know, if you teach anything knife fighting, you need to read is chapter two, knife fighting myths. Uh, to make sure that you're not teaching myth, as so many people are, act combat one. And let's see, so then we look at uh, number th uh, chapter three, and chapter three is the actual attack, the beginning of the, uh, the attack, so the knife attack. So what we're gonna do here is we're basically going to uh, follow the drills. I'm not gonna go into great details of that. I mean, you know, you read the book. Uh, you know, he talks about grips, and uh, you know one thing that I, you know, you've heard me saying uh, in the videos up here is about the ice pick grip. Uh, he, you know, uh, his text agrees wholeheartedly with my thoughts on the ice pick uh, grip, and you know he calls his other grip that he uses the hit grip. Again, he doesn't use the fighting grip, which would be the saber grip. You know, he calls that a weak grip, and I agree with it. And again, he calls that a uh, a slashing grip, I believe. Uh, and again, he's not big on slashing. You know, we'll, as we see, he's not big on slashing at all. He considers slashing a uh, big waste of time. And again, you know, uh, does he make a good point? Yes, he makes a good point. Again, he's way out over here. And there's, then let's say, the technique side over here. You know, there are a lot of reasons to use a slash. Uh, and again, he's just totally against slashes. You know, where's the truth? Somewhere in the middle, probably. I mean, slashes definitely have uh, an effective use. Now again, his attack is for an armed guy on an unarmed guy. That's what he's really talking about in this manual. An armed guy against an unarmed guy. <coughs> again, this attack that he uses, you know, as we'll see in a, a little later, it's it's a pretty easy attack to defend if you have a knife. Okay, that's the first thing. It's a pretty easy attack to defend if you have a knife. And of course, you've built a foundation in your knife fighting skills. Again, like by following along with this course. Uh, so again, he's talking about this hit grip, and the hit grip is you're just grabbing that knife as tight as you can in what I would call a hammer grip, and then hit on that angle three. And let's see, where do we go from there? Whoops. So from there he talks about a knife fighting stance. From there he talks about knife fighting stance, and again, uh, the knife fighting stance is very similar to the stance that we've already learned in this uh, in this class, except for he does lead with that empty hand a little bit, and he's got the knife back here. Again, because this is such an integral part of his attack, uh, you need this hand out here, and we'll look at how he does all that. All right, so the next section that Don goes into is his attack. It's a one-two attack. I mean, you're a boxer, bam, Bam, one, two attack, right? Works. Uh, Hoist Gracie, when he was at the top and he was teaching his seminars, what did he teach? The hand in the face and the two shooting the leg. So again, a one, two attack. I mean, it, it works in almost everything. Uh, point point sparring, uh, karate, you know, an early technique that you, you learn. What is it? The back fist and then coming through, boom, with the side kick. It's a one, two attack. Why do one, two attacks work? Because the first attack diverts the attention, brings everything up towards this defense, and it leaves another area open. So it creates an opening. So that's the big thing with the one-two attack. And that's what Dawn is gonna talk about here, and we'll look at the drills, is this one, and then you're coming with this two. Of course, he's gonna be more like in this stance here, this is gonna come out here, and there's the two. So again, you get the attention up here, and boom, here comes this knife attack down below, because you've diverted his attention. You've created an opening down low. Uh, he also has a uh, three-step attack, where this is when you're, again, you're outside of that contact interval. He has another word for it. I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, I'm sure uh, 20 people will put a little comment down here, which I'll just remove. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, you have the fighting interval, which is your uh, contact interval. So if you're outside of the contact interval, then he uses a three-step attack, like we were doing with the empty hand feint, okay? What he does at this point is he feints with the knife hand. So he's gonna be here, 
and when he's outside of contact distance to bridge that gap, he's going to try to divert the attention low, stuffing his knife out here for a second. Now it's too far to actually reach the guy with, but again, you want to divert his attention down. Now his attention is down. Now you didn't throw that out there as bait because you were outside of contact distance, so you really had no, uh, uh, no uh, danger in throwing that knife hand out there but it will divert the attention down for the guy you're attacking. Now his attention his attention goes down, now you step inside a contact distance, now you're ready to put this hand up in his face and get a touch on his face to really divert his attention and then boom, the knife starts coming down here. So those are his basic attacks. He's got the one-two attack and then he's got the three-step attack. And uh, we're gonna start looking at those drills now and we'll do some of that for you. So again, the uh, basic stance, what he wants is your feet about shoulder width apart, one foot in front of the other, and what he's going to do, he's going to lead with the uh, with the empty hand side. He's going to crouch down this way, and you've seen us in this crouch stance, and you're going to hold the knife like this. So he's, he's, the hand can go this way, or it can go this way, that's up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. But again, I'm crouched, and I'm ready to spring forth, almost like in a sprinter stance, or a wide receiver stance, get ready to uh, uh, move forward. So I, I have a very forward profile here, I'm going to be going forward. This is where the attack is going to start from. Now, when I do attack, I'm going to lift the front knee first. It's going to be a step and drag movement. And I'm just going to put this, shoot this hand out. Now, again, we're going to use all our principles of the knife strike, <coughs> where we're going to bring all our, our weight forward. You want this strike to hit hard if it hits, okay? You definitely want it to hit hard. So again, I'm going to be here, and I'm going to lean out, hit him right here. He's going to have to react to this. His eyes are going to close. His head is going to go back. His hands are going to come back. Oh, now we're both holding a knife right now, but of course, this guy's not holding a knife. I'm attacking a guy who doesn't have a knife. So I'm here, and then from here, I just start coming in here with this one here. Okay? So that's basically it. That's the one, two. I'm here. I bring this thing out here, and boom. So let's say I wanted to attack this guy. He doesn't see me. Uh, he's not ready for the attack. I'd walk up like this. I could immediately come down here. Now I'm going to lunge at this guy, bam, that's the attack right there, and then this thing just keeps going. That's a basic one too, so we'll work that on each other a little bit. Alright again, uh, Dawn talks about using a uh, palm strike. The reason I like the palm strike versus the fist is uh, pretty simple. There's Scotty's body in the background there with my fist kind of just right on his silhouette there. And that's my reach with a fist. And when I go to a palm strike, oh look at that, all of a sudden my fingers have extended a couple more inches. I like the fingers in the eye. He says a palm strike like this, but I really think what he's talking about is that extra reach provided by the fingers. I mean a pure palm strike, again I have a little problem with that wrist, it doesn't bend all the way it's supposed to because I got wounded. But anyways, uh, that pure palm strike is shorter than the fist, and then the fingers are longer when I'm like this. So I really like this, I like a face break. Uh, so if you wanted to modify that technique, again, trying to get a finger in his eyes. Uh, you know, watch any UFC fight when the fingers go in somebody's eye. Watch a boxing when a thumb goes in the eye. The fighter is virtually uh, completely debilitated and defenseless at that point. So yeah, do you want to get fingers in the eyes? Yes. As a matter of fact, Don says, you know, to defend this technique, the first thing you have to try to do is get your fingers in this guy's eye. He says, you know, when a guy comes at you with a technique like this, fingers in the eyes, strike to the groin, strike to the throat. These are things that cause, you know, like strike to the throat, it's going to immediately put you on the defense. Of course, an eye is going to put you on the defense. A shot to the groin going to get you on the defense. So those, I mean, when I do my hand-to-hand -hand course, I mean, that's really what I talk about is eyes, groin, eyes, and groin, eyes, and groin. So again, now this is different. You're not leading with your knife side. Right, you're here. And go ahead and just you know, hold the knife from here. Get that nice low stance. What you're going to do is see your feet. They're too thin. Get shoulder width. Crouch down on the ball of the back foot. Right now, bring that foot back a little bit. You're not the big guy. No, no, back. So put that foot right here. That's yeah, That's what we're talking about. We want you to have that left to right stability. Okay, so this here, just like I'm saying, you're getting ready to start running. You know, just get in a stance where that's what you're really going to do. Freaking run at me. But you're going to start with a, a step and drag, okay? So here I am hanging out. Go ahead, and I just want you to start from the full stand. So, you know, here like this. Okay, but we're not doing our normal. Okay. We're doing Dawn Pentecost attack, okay? Okay, so now get low, get low. Okay, yeah, here's what you want. 
Okay, do you want to look at the picture again and see it? Okay, so this is what we want. This hand is up here in front. Okay, here, now you can put this here. Now, yes, now you look like you're ready to charge at somebody. That's what we're talking about. It's just charging and overwhelming this guy. This is what the karate guys don't prepare for. The karate guys start here in a nice stance and they come with a one thrust. That's not what we're going to do. You just want to bowl this guy over with body, mind, and knife. You want to bowl this guy over. Okay, private. Think private. Don't think about technique right now. We're doing launch attack, not our attack. So this is just private. Now from here, you feel like you're ready really to just launch right at my head. I put that right on top of my head. So what you want to do is you want to just put this right on my head. These two knuckles here, right on my forehead, okay? You're allowed to smack me a little bit, okay? Just don't like put them in my eye. But again, you know, what we would be doing is we'd strike here, this would strike down and rake across here. Then from here, we're coming in here, boom. And again, we'd probably be grabbing here and taking this guy that way, okay? But again, that's the full thing. For right now, I just want you to jump out at me 10 times, tap that head, and get one shot in over here. And here I am, I'm just the dude hanging out. Right, yeah, bring it around. I mean, again, any opening. Here's the thing you got to remember, okay? And this is a big thing with what I'm teaching when we get towards the end. You have to account for Murphy, okay? You have to account for the fact that something is probably going to go wrong. If your system requires you to do intricate moves and it requires that this guy doesn't interfere with you, you have a system that's not going to work, okay? It has to be able to account for Murphy. And the first Murphy is that what is what target's going to be open. Believe me, the target you think is going to be open has a high degree of possibility that it won't be open on the day you do your stuff. So that's the first thing is target acquisition. You can't always go to this, you know, you can't have a route memorized technique where you always go here and then here and then here. You can't do that because in the real life, He's not following the same script. He doesn't know where he's supposed to leave that opening. So that's the first thing. You know, if, if my arm is here, well, go here. If you wind up with a big step and you wind up behind me, well, then go over here. So whatever you want. Ready? Now, whatever you're ready. Now, see your drag? So when I come through here, so if I'm going to have the knife in my left hand, I'm going to be here like this. Now when I come with this one here, it has to be, the drag has to be here. That's what's letting me get behind you. If you're still stretched out like this, that's why this is here. Now is there a problem with this technique? <laughs> no, there's no problem with that technique. Okay? As far as, I say technique, I mean target area. There's no problem with that target area and this target area. Which target area is open? You know, up here. You know, whatever. But for right now, we're just working on the basic. Just jumping in at this guy. Bam, firing in on you. There it is. And that's what you want. You gotta finish that thing. Now, when you come through here and you're here, it's the next move probably a step through? Yeah, the next move is probably a step through. Now you start getting really, you can uh, uh, keep mobilizing, grabbing you here. I can grab you here if I'm down low. You know, whatever it takes to get you to demobilize. Sorry, man. I said sorry this yeah, time. Yeah, Right, that, see, that's what I want. I want to feel that I'm being bowled over here. That's a big thing. What up, man? What, what's the problem? Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Now, it's got to be a one, two. So we're here. See, I'm turning here. I'm putting this shoulder in. I'm trying to protect my head from getting hit. I'm trying to stay low. I'm trying to cover my center line by turning sideways a little bit. Now, when I bring this drag through, bam! Like that, okay? This leg sliding through, bring that hip through for that strike. This one's turning this one out, and then this slide is bringing this one through. There you go. So again, does technique matter? You can see that because I studied the martial arts, I can realize that, well, if I close the gate, I get more extension for this first one. But more importantly, what that does is on the drag now, on the drag, that allows the hip to come through this way, closing the gate, and boom, I start smashing in on it. Ooh. 
I might say that wrong. Yeah, I'm going to close the gate here, open the gate here, which allows that hip to come through. You always get the horizontal and the da da and open the close backwards, right? Yeah, you need to do the step and drag first. Bam! Just think of it as a jump. What are you doing? You're jumping in the pool, feet first. Now from here, once you land here, then you can start turning this thing around. Primal, man, primal. <laughs> right, right, that's the hard part. Right? <laughs> that was good. That was primal, baby. That was the whole thing coming at me. Oh my God, yes. Now you're throwing that nice five. Throw that hooking three. There it is. Yeah, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to get this guy back up where he can't even think about defense. Remember Kelly McCann's swamp, where we want to land on top of this guy with this strike. And like he's saying, uh, this needs to be a strike. This needs to be a full force, full power strike. So if you fall all your swamp on there, and you uh, move in the direction of the strike, and you plunge on the target, those are the two big things here to bring in that hard strike. He's, you want him so affected by this, that, right, that's what you want, that he never even sees this one coming. And again, we're keeping our hands down and you're smacking my elbow with your fist, you know, that type of stuff. I mean, that, the more, okay, go ahead with an elbow. I mean, that's going to be my reaction. You see what I'm saying? Now you point that thing at my side. And I'm going to have that scar response, and boom, there, now I'm gone. Right. Well, I'm trying to make it, you know. <laughs> I mean, that, that, one you, that one you had was uh, definitely primal. That one you had like three of them ago, that was primal. This looks like, you look like what I look when I started. Right, right. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put the, because uh, I mean, what I'm going to do is completely different. I mean, whoop, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to exploit this thing. I'm going to be like this. That's how I'm going to take this out. X block is coming, excuse me. The modified X block is coming. What I also call the wall block. I named it the wall block back in like 1983. Yeah, in 83 I named it, no, no, excuse me. 1980, 81 I named it the wall block. And since then I've changed it to the modified X block. But that's coming up in less than a seven or six right now. So we're almost there. saying I need to get this strong. Where you're not getting it strong, when you come in here, see how the gate is turning this way, my hips are this way? That's where it's coming from. That's where all my my core is now driving that knife in. I'm not arm swinging it as much as I am. Mm. Just blocking that elbow here and boom, hitting that first one there. Driving it with the hip and the shoulder. There it is right there. And see, now you step through with it. There's no problem with stepping through with it. I mean, you're here, and you're here, and you step through, no problems. No problems. I think you lose a little bit of uh, momentum behind it because of the fact that you're not grounded and pushing it, but you do have momentum because the whole body's coming. Yeah, I feel like I'm weaker when I just do it. Yeah, but that's because you're not opening the gate, I mean, closing and opening the gate. You're just coming in straight like this instead of Reach out like this, like a jab. I and mean, when you throw a jab, right, you turn this way, right? And what does that do? That loads up this, so that now you come through here. And now I can come through here and stop, or I could come through here all the way. And now that allows me to take that flanking motion pretty good. Don't wind it up quite as much. Just let it come here, keep the elbow in contact, and let it stay there. I know sometimes mine flail about a little bit. There it is right there. 
Now just throw over two steps. Bam, bam. There it is right there. That's going all the way through the liver. Through the liver into the stomach. Get me out of my view. So while you're out there playing tag like this with your knife and you're ready to play tag, and this dude just comes running in, you put your knife out like a right hand forward lead. Okay, so this guy's here, so we're going to play tag. And of course, I'm going to go back to my other style because that's my other style of the left lead. But I'm going to have the knife in my right hand, okay? So here I am here. I'm like this. What am I going to do to this guy? I don't care about this knife and I don't care about my hand because I'm a freaking primal psycho single-mindedly directed, freaking lethal, homicidal maniac, okay? I want to kill you, okay? So now we're going to do a knife on knife and we're going to use this attack. So you ready? So what am I going to do here? I'm just coming in here, bam, bam. That's all I'm going to do. Let me see you block that one with your little sparring session. I don't care what you do with this knife. Let me try to bring it up and slash my neck when I come out. <laughs> Why? Because I know where that knife has to go. When I have this hand here, that knife, I mean, where's it going to go? It's going to be in this cone. It's going to be in this cone, right? So I know it's going to be here. Well, well, let's just take my arm here. Did it figure this side out? Did it figure this side out? Did it figure here? It doesn't matter where he's going because I know where his knife has to go. I'm just going to use this hand to smack it the F out of the way. So again, here I am here. I'm going to come in with this knife and bam, bam. You're done. Your only chance is to get the knife retracted before I come at it. This time, try to retract the knife back before I come at it, okay? So here I come. So he got it retracted, but guess what? I'm still on it. I've got a trap. And boom, boom! I've got that there. You think you're gonna outspar me with a knife in front? I can use the most simple attack to tear you up. We're not even in the lesson eight and nine where we have more advanced, uh, uh, where we have more advanced attacks than what we're looking at here. I can use this basic attack and run you over if you're gonna hold the knife in front. Yeah, try and switch, switch, put the knife in your right hand now. And that's it, come out and jab, do 10 of those. Just let that leg slide. What I want to see is I want to see that on the ground, from that sliding leg. That's what I, now see the way it worked? It worked out good that time. Because you have the proper footwork. So again, proper footwork. Is that a trade-in technique? that a martial arts guy could have. Yes, it is. Now, a lot of martial arts guys don't do it exactly like this, and that's too bad. You know, they think you know, everything is a step through movement. No, a lot of it is step and drag, step and drag. Martial artist guys, you traditional martial arts guys, you got to get a step and drag into your system. Again, what does a boxer do in the ring? They step and drag, they step and drag. What is a guy who's shooting the leg? What do they do? They step and drag. What do you do when you're throwing a sidekick? That, that side kick combo. You come here, and then you kick, and there should be a little drag there as you come across. It's much closer. Unfortunately, it still is kind of like a step through motion. But again, you get these guys, advanced guys like Bill Wallace, they're gonna be more like this, where we slide on that leg, so you have a drag. You have a step that's coming up in the air, and then there's a drag as we throw that kick. So much more advanced technique. You gotta throw out that old footwork you got to bring quicker, modern footwork into your system, you martial arts, you traditional martial arts out there. There was a rising block. You threw a rising block. Step into a reverse, uh, stepped into a front stance and a backwards motion, throw that rising block, and what's going to happen? Do I throw it? Boom, he got it. It's not going to work. Oh, got him. Well, no, he got me. That's the thing that this does. Sorry, I'm being on your forearm. Step 
drag works a little better. It keeps me on that center line going in. So I got a little better chance using the step and drag. You start sitting yourself into these low stances going in. It's just too slow. I'm going to get nailed every time. See, my hand, my reactionary time is not as good. I stand like this though. Do that step and drag a lot quicker. Now let's take that step and drag forward. To the side, I mean, and forward. You know, it works a lot better. So by far, this modern footwork is better, guys. Now I'm just giving him a uh, standard startle response reaction. Okay, so let me swap off to a couple more, right? Do my right right like five Yo, man, give me the keys to your car. I need your wallet and your keys now. Mm. <laughs> you didn't answer fast enough. Hey man, were you looking at my girl in the club? Yeah. You were? Oh, you're just a man. You're gonna man up to my shit, huh? <clears throat> That's the way it works. <clears throat> you wanna get this head in here close. Why? So that he can't hit you with something effectively. His hand's gonna come in here. Bam. Bring the elbow back to the center line, covering for any knees. If this guy's a real tricky, uh, skilled fighter, bam. Bam. Told you not to pick that up. Okay, so now we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna advance it, and we'll look at that uh, three-step attack. All right, so again, for this class, we're not gonna deal with uh, chapters one and two, which, uh, again, let me just get the beginning of the book here. Again, chapter one is uh, chapter one is the basics of knife fighting. Uh, chapter two is knife fighting myths, which uh, is if you know if you teach anything knife fighting, you need to read is chapter two, knife fighting myths, uh, to make sure that you're not teaching myth, as so many people are. Act combat one grip that he uses the hit grip. Again, he doesn't use the fighting grip, which would be the saber grip. You know, he calls that a weak grip, and I agree with it. And again, he calls that a, uh, a slashing grip, I believe. Uh, and again, he's not big on slashing. You know, we'll, as we see, he's not big on slashing at all. He considers slashing a uh, big waste of time. And again, you know, uh, does he make a good point? Yes, he makes a good point. Again, he's way out over here, and there's then, let's say, the technique side over here. You know, there are a lot of reasons to use a slash. Uh, and again, he's just totally against slashes. You know, where's the truth? Somewhere in the middle, probably. I mean, slap. And let's see. So then we look at uh, number th uh, chapter three. And chapter three is the actual attack, the beginning of the uh, the attack. So the knife attack. So what we're going to do here is we're basically going to uh, follow the drills. I'm not going to go into great details of that. I mean, you know, you read the book. Uh, you know, he talks about grips, and uh, you know one thing that I, you know, you've heard me saying uh, in the videos up here is about the ice pick grip. Uh, he, you know, uh, his text agrees wholeheartedly with my thoughts on the ice pick uh, grip, and you know he calls his other classes definitely have uh, an effective use. Now again, his attack is for an armed guy on an unarmed guy. That's what he's really talking about in this manual: an armed guy against an unarmed guy. <laughs> Again, this attack that he uses, you know, as we'll see in a, a little later, it's it's a pretty easy attack to defend if you have a knife. Okay, that's the first thing. It's a pretty easy attack to defend if you have a knife. And of course, you've built a foundation in your knife fighting skills. Again, like by following along with this course. Uh, so again, he's talking about this hit grip, and the hit grip is you're just grabbing that knife as tight as you can in what I would call a hammer grip. And they hit on that angle three. And let's see, where do we go from there? Whoops. So from there he talks about a knife fighting stance. From there he talks about knife fighting stance. And again, uh, 
The knife fighting stance is very similar to the stance that we've already learned in this uh, in this class, except for he does lead with that empty hand a little bit, and he's got the knife back here. Again, because this is such an integral part of his attack, uh, you need this hand out here, and we'll look at how he does all that.